Welcome. Today we shall be looking at one of the classes of anti-cancer drugs known as alkylating agents. One of the frightening developments of World War I was the introduction of chemical warfare. These compounds were known as nitrogen mustard gases. The nitrogen mustards were observed to inhibit cell growth, especially of the bone marrows, and shortly after the war, these compounds were investigated and shown to inhibit growth of cancer cells. This gave birth to a class of drugs known as alkylating agents. These alkylating agents are antineoplastic or anti-cancer drugs which work by inhibiting the transcription of the DNA to RNA by a process known as alkylation. Alkylating agents are cell psychophase non-specific drugs which means they work by causing damage to the DNA of the cancer cells in all the phases of the cell cycle and ultimately leading to cancer cell death. The nitrogen masters work by inhibiting cell reproduction by binding irreversibly with the nucleic acid, specifically the DNA, and the specific type of chemical bounding that is involved in this case is alkylation. To define alkylation, it is a process of adding an alkyl group to a DNA. After this alkylation process, the DNA is unable to replicate and therefore it can no longer synthesize proteins and other essential cell metabolites by, needed by the cancer cells and this cell reproduction is inhibited and eventually the cell dies from inability to maintain its metabolic functions. Alkylating agents are classified into a number of classes that is the nitrogen mustards nitrosoureus, ethylene amines, alkyl sulfonates, triazines, and metosolts. We shall try and look at the most important drugs in each of the classes. Some of the important adverse effects of alkylating agents are myelosuppression or bone marrow suppression, which is the dose limiting adverse effects for most of these agents. We also have nausea and vomiting, which are common as teratogenesis and gonadal atrophy. Although the latter cases, these are variable according to drug, its schedule, and the route of administration. The treatment also carries a major risk of leukemogenesis and carcinogenesis. Let's start with mechlorethamine or mastin. Mechlorethamine is known as mastin or nitrogen mustard and is a prototype anti-cancer chemotherapeutic drug. It works by forming DNA crosslinks, resulting in inhibition of DNA synthesis and DNA function. We use mechlorethamine in the treatment of Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And some of the important side effects are nausea, vomiting, excessive doses are known to cause bone marrow depression. This mechlorethamine or mastin must be injected intravenously because of its highly reactive properties. It is known to disappear very rapidly from the blood and the activity lasts only a few minutes. The next important drug is cyclophosphamide. This cyclophosphamide is a nitrogen mustard which works by exerting its antineoplastic effects through alkylation process. It can be administered orally and is used in the treatment of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, breast and ovarian cancers, and a variety of other solid tumors. It is also a potent immunosuppressant, therefore used in the management of rheumatoid disorders and autoimmune nephritis. Of the most important side effects, we notice alopecia, nausea and vomiting, myelosuppression and hemorrhagic cystitis. Another class of anticholating agents is nitrosoureus. In nitrosoureus, we have drugs, for example, camustine, lamustine, and semustine. The nitrosoureus are highly lipid soluble drugs and are able to cross the blood brain barrier, making them very effective in the treatment of brain tumors. 
These nitrous urease reach cerebrospinal fluid concentration, which are about 30 to 40 percent of the plasma concentration. Because of their excellent central nervous system penetration, we use camustin and lormustin in treatment of brain tumors. In the elimination, urinary excretion is the major route of elimination from the body, and we have one of the important uh, drugs here known as streptotoxin, which is a minimal bone marrow toxicity, and it has a great activity in the treatment of insulin secreting eyelid cell carcinoma of the pancreas. Another example of alkylating agents is a phenylalanine, nitrogen mustard, also known as melphalan. Melphalan is a member of nitrogen mustard alkylating agent families and it works by alkylating guanine which results in inter and intrastrand links of DNA. Primarily we use it to treat multiple myeloma which is a plasma cell myeloma, breast cancers and ovarian cancers. Then we have alkyl sulfonates. An example of it is bisulfan. These alkyl sulfonates are esters of alkane sulfonic acids. With bisulfan, we use it orally to treat chronic granulocytic leukemias and other myeloproliferative disorders. But of the important side effects, we have myeloid suppression and it occasionally produces nausea and vomiting and in high doses, it produces a rare but sometimes fatal pulmonary fibrosis known as bisulfan lung. Then we have thiotaper. Thiotaper is a cytostatic agent that is converted rapidly by the liver, mixed function of the deces to its active metabolite known as triethylene phosphoramide, also known as TEPA. Alkylating agent thiotaper produces crosslinks of DNA strands by reacting with phosphate groups to inhibit protein synthesis, DNA, and RNA functions. It is active in the treatment of bladder cancers and ovarian cancers. And lastly, we have ciplatin. Ciplatin is used to manage and treat solid tumors and hematologic cancers, and it's the alkylating agent class belonging to a drug known as cytotoxic medications. It works by the formation of intrastrand and interstrand DNA crosslinks binding to nuclear and cytoplasmic proteins. Ciplastin is used in the treatment of non-small cell and small cell lung cancers, breast cancers, bladder cancers, gastroesophageal cancers, head and neck tumors, ovarian cancers, and germ cell cancers. It causes nausea and vomiting, nephrotoxicity, peripheral sensor neuropathy, autotoxicity, and nerve dysfunction.